This is the first in a series of videos showing the development of my next game. Uh, the videos will show the game from scratch to hopefully a finished product. The first thing you're seeing here is the level editor, which I'll be using to generate all the levels in the game. It's written in C++ uh, and the UI framework is Qt. Eventually I'm going to hook this up to my backend renderer. Uh, for this game, I'm doing things a little bit differently in that I'm building a custom level editor. The last game I used Maya and all the content was uh, generated from Maya. For this game, I want a custom editor because it's always good to have an editor that's perfectly tailored for the type of game that you're doing. And I also see the editor as an investment that I can use for future projects. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to show some of the features. Uh, the first is uh, the lights. I, the engine supports five different types of lights. Here's your point light, uh, your standard directional light, a box light, which is exactly like a point light, except that um, the dimensions are a uh, box, uh, ambient light, and then the traditional spotlight. Right now I have the gizmo, which will scale with uh, movement from the camera, and I support translation of your objects. And of course I also support object picking. You can also translate along a plane, like here I'm translating along the X plane. Another thing I support is uh, grid snapping. So if you want to move the, uh, the objects based upon the uh, grid spacing, you can do that. Let's move in a little bit closer so you can see that. Boom. And then if I want to move along the grid, you can do that. Uh, the other thing is you can change the grid spacing to whatever resolution you need. So if you need to go really fine to place things very accurately, you can do that. So there. And of course, your, your grid will still snap. You can also go as high as uh, roughly a square kilometer with your grid spacing. Now, why you'd want to do that? I don't know, but the level editor supports it. Maybe if you want to do a Grand Theft Auto style game. I can also speed up the camera. So if you need to move quickly around the world, you can do that. And let me see, a little bit further back. And there we go. So each one of these highlighted squares is roughly a square kilometer. Again, it supports it. So now I'm going to go back closer in here and I'll just reduce the uh, grid spacing again back to something more manageable. And I'll slow the camera down. Yeah, there we go. I usually work in square meters. That's what I find most comfortable, but uh, the artist may work in something else. I don't know. So yeah, got your grid snapping, which you can also turn off. There you go. Let's see, what else can I show for features? Oh yeah, auto backups. If you're working in the editor, you can have it back your scene up every 30 minutes or how, however often you choose. That way, if should the editor crash, you know, you've still got copies of your work and you haven't lost. Uh, much of your work and you can also zoom the camera in and out and also you've got your dockable widgets also support that so you can move move that stuff around however you, however uh, you prefer and the editor will save your settings so the next time you load it up uh, your widgets and will be docked uh, in the last location. So it doesn't look like there's been a lot of progress with the editor, but that's partly because I've spent most of my time building up the framework and all the systems that I'm going to need for pretty much all the features. So that way everything's ready. And when I need to add, build out the, the features, I know that the underlying system will support them and I won't be sitting there going, oh, I got to rewrite this system or this framework because I didn't plan properly. So um, that's pretty much what I've been doing, pretty much the background work, which is always uh, the most boring. 
And uh, so yeah, the first thing I got was the translation gizmo. And eventually I'm just gonna build up all the features until the UI is complete. For the next video, I'm gonna show the renderer and uh, that'll show the lighting and also the shadowing, although that's pretty much a prototype renderer. Eventually I'm just gonna refactor that code because, uh, well, I've learned some tricks uh, in the time that I wrote that render. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.